Hi, back again. This is Justin G0KSC, part two of the quad discussion. Uh, so please see part one to know what we're talking about at all here. So where we are um, and what we were looking at is this, uh, this flat quad. Now, one of the reasons that this is fairly compact is to allow for more antennas to go on in the, the vertical plane on uh, the, uh, any mast that you might have. The traditional shape of the loop obviously would be square and there are square examples of this but what i want to look at is i want to look at the uh, uh, or compare this one with a, a couple that i'd produced that were with the 110 ohm uh, feed point in order that i could use two equal lengths of 75 ohm coax to join together uh, that needs to be in odd quarter wave multiple lengths um, to produce a stack. Now while these are two elements they are more square in shape which is going to give you a small gain advantage over this, the squashed one um, and they have a, an extra parasitic between them, an re extra reflector which just adds a little bit uh, a tiny amount of, of gain and uh, front to back there as well. Um, but when you look at the difference here um, this is now 30 centimeters so it's over twice the length the, of the, uh, the the 50 ohm one. If I was to let me take off the uh, secondary set of um, elements for the quad and also the reflector, and if I look at that as a single antenna, um, you can see that it's got 7.31 dB and 22 dB front to back. So it is better, um, and it's got more performance than a smaller, more compact quad. But the difference is this is over twice the length to get that um, extra half a dB. Um, but the, the advantage with this one is the, uh, the, the bandwidth. And this is what I was coming back to before. I feel that with the higher impedance quads, you lose a little bit of the, um, the out and out performance. So the gain per foot of boom drops. But because they were so wide band, you could perhaps get away with them not being quite accurate in model because it would still kind of work out, out okay. But when you look at this stack, uh, this one now with the two antennas uh, together is producing over 11 dB and still got the 22 dB front to back. And that's a fairly nicely compact uh, antenna. Now I can show you this array uh, because I installed it myself on my uh, VHF tower. And you can see that here. This is these uh, antennas. So you've got the top one here, the bottom one, and then the reflector in the middle. So it's pretty neat. Um, another bonus really is that with any quad or uh, Yagi, the beam width, how wide the, uh, the gain will be, is denoted by the distance between the first and the last element. There are some other small factors which can have a very, very small influence on the, the sizing of the elements, etc., etc. But in the main, it's the distance between the first and last element. The pink lines, as we've discussed in previous videos, denote the beam width. And you can see that this is 72.23 dB beam width. So it performs very, very well. It's got a reasonable amount of gain over a pretty damn wide uh, beam width there on that uh, using that stack. The important part is is that you've got to get this right. And you can see here that you've got the coax cables, which is RG11 on this occasion. There's a simple T-piece N-type connector at the center for joining the two together to a, a 50 ohm line. And then it runs down. Now, something you might have noticed here, uh, which uh, you may not have noticed um, on the, the model itself. I'm just going to make out as if I'm changing something here, <clears throat> just so I can get rid of the, the pink current lines in the drawing. Now let's center this and just move that around. For those of you that have seen some of the videos already, you'll know that the, the little red circle here denotes the feed point. Uh, what is of interest, of course, is that you've got a feed point at the top of this bottom uh, loop and the bottom of this top one. There's a couple of reasons for that. With a quad, uh, as with any antenna, the ideal uh, place to feed is in the center. 
With a Yagi it's two dimensional, with a Quad it's three dimensional. So you can't easily, <laughs> of course, feed the Quad right in the middle of the, the hole uh, that's between the, the four sides. That wouldn't be practical. So when you now put it onto any side, you will get a slight distortion in the pattern in that direction. When you, um, uh, and what we can do is we can demonstrate that. So I'm going to put the the sources here. Uh, we can see this one's 13 and 16. We've got the 13 here. This one is eight and the bottom one is number five. So if I change the wire that the source is on to number five from eight, you will then see that that source will drop here. So I'm going to change this to elevation. Um, and you can see now that it's perhaps not uh, as easy to see unless you compare with these outer lines that this down facing lobe is um, more orientated towards ground than up now what you could do of course is you could change those if you wanted less pointing down towards ground which would be listening to and picking up interference from all sorts of places we could orient those in the other direction so if we put that to 16 and this one to 8 so now we've put the feed points at the top and now look at the elevation plot. You'll see that the smaller of the two lobes facing down towards ground and towards our shack and towards our neighbours and everything else is now a little bit more compressed than the top lobe. But to balance it, to bring back symmetry to the elevation plane, what we need to do is to bring this one back to 13 um, in order that we have them <coughs> opposite ends like this so uh, or, or much closer to each other the other benefit that that has when you're stacking of course is that now the feed points are much closer together in a situation like this one where these particular quads have a half a meter um, distance between top and bottom you're moving the feed points half a meter closer together so where you have to do odd quarter wave multiple lengths like one wave length uh, three wavelengths, five wavelengths, and so on between uh, of the, the coax cable to join them together. With this one, I was able to adjust the stacking distance in order that I could use just the, um, the odd uh, quarter wave um, multiple lengths here uh, to bring it in uh, together. The difference is with this one is that um, it was a a little bit more clever than that in a, in a sense because these are the 110 ohm uh, loops with the 110 ohm loops we need a quarter wave of 75 ohm coax in order to bring us to 50 ohm and then you need if we're doing a stack you need 70 an odd quarter wave multiple length of 75 ohm coax so one uh, wavelength three wavelengths five wavelengths in order to get back to the feed point because these was 110 ohm we got that first quarter wave length then we need to stack so we've got another single quarter wave length on top of that it means that the the coax lengths needed for this were um, uh, not odd but even quarter wave lengths so I was able to use a half wave length of 75 ohm coax and a half wave length of 75 ohm coax and that's what you'll see in that photo uh, that's what these lengths are to join them together to get the uh, the 50 ohm impedance the added bonus excuse this for being on the side here is that the uh, SWR if you look at this here goes from one point oh sorry 141.5 where it's 1.4 to 1 to 152.4 where it's 1.4 to 1 and drops drastically in between and you can see for quite a way it's well under 1.2 to 1 so very very wide uh, bandwidth as a result and excellent performance so works very well indeed but what you can also do if we take uh, close this one down and we now open uh, this three element example if you uh, were to take um, uh, we spoke earlier about uh, the impedance of a Yagi or a quad the lower the impedance generally the better the performance can be it sometimes occurs that you would have less bandwidth sorry yes less bandwidth but you generally have to move the driver cell or the early elements within a, a Yagi or a quad closer together to get that stability and, and bandwidth back again so when you look at these 
three um, or these three element quads here. These are um, um, just fairly short. They're 60 centimeters long. Uh, the, the stacking distance um, isn't um, particularly high. It's just a, a meter and a half. Um, and these still have the the half a meter loop ends here for for usage. The difference is this one is optimized for 25 ohm impedance, so the the performance goes up again. When um, the reason that's done that way is that now you can use odd quarter wave multiple lengths of 50 ohm coax, join those together at the feed point where it will be 50 ohm. So now rather than having to find 75 ohm coax, you can use the same 50 ohm coax that you're using in the shack as the phasing lines um, and then feed that with coax with a, an n-type joiner. It must be an n-type joiner ideally. The n-type is a, a constant impedance connector so it's 50 ohm all the way through the connector. If you use an SO239 or UHF connector they're infinite impedance so you, you, you perhaps won't get the same kind of match that you would otherwise get. So when you look at this now very quad style pattern uh, here as you can see with just these 60 centimeter long Yagi's we've now got 12.34 dBi of gain and 26 well pretty much 27 dB front to back but um, notice that uh, these have still got the feed points at the uh, bottoms of these quads now let me just show you I'm going to uh, save this trace we've done this before um, I know uh, so we can save this as it is now I'm going to switch so that this feed point here goes to the top of this loop so now we've got them much closer together so we can use our shorter lengths of coax to stack and get our 50 ohm feed now look at the difference in this pattern see the front to side now the difference that that's made to make a, a real um, impression on just uh, what we've done here uh, I'm going to bring back the quad and I'm going to need to change uh, or bring back the original quad I should say um, and I'm going to change the recalled trace to red <clears throat> so now you can see here let's just cancel that off uh, just exactly the difference in that front to side ratio the original with them fed both at the bottom or both at the top means that you get this uh, red outline now that we've fed them on the same side you've got a massive amount of front to side that's uh, increase so very very good indeed especially if you're contesting and got something off the side that's going to be quite high so let's just have a look and see uh, what we've done on the two sets of quads let's close uh, these down for just a moment to give a bit more clarity to the screen so with the 110 ohm uh, quad um, this should actually say uh, half wave lengths on this one uh, when we've got 110 ohm uh, lengths so I need to change that uh, so we've got a quad at the top quad at the bottom a coax cable in between when there are 110 ohm uh, quads 112 ohm quads two lots of 75 ohm coax with even lengths of cable uh, between them and then uh, where you join that's a 50 ohm feed point when it's the uh, the 50 ohm then uh, the or when we're using 50 ohm coax to stack the quads need to be 25 ohm each side that's going to give you an increase in performance and then using two lots of 50 ohm coax you get your 50 ohm feed point the the point to remember is it's okay feeding these on the opposite side or on the same side but you must make sure that you don't reverse wire the antennas now the positive could be on this side on both of these in this case it's on this side but they've both got to be fed on the same side so the RF would be doing this going round the loop and going round this way on this loop if you were to make this one positive on this side and that one positive on that all they will do is cancel each other out and you'll get pretty much no performance whatsoever uh, you'll get uh, still good SWR you just won't be able to hear very much and you won't be able to to um, um, get out very well at all 
So that's the uh, the the um, um, most important factor of this stack. Again, I'm rushing away here to try and get so much information out in this short period of time, and we're up to 15 minutes again. For the real detail, see Dubus magazine. That's a must. It's uh, dubus.org. The the list is on the or the uh, the URL is on here. Excuse me for tripping over myself on occasions. It's just I'm trying to rush in a short period of time to get as much information as I can. Uh, and please do subscribe. It does help out. If we can get above that uh, that thousand subs um, pretty soon, I can get some more airtime on uh, each of these videos. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon.